think I could live on that thing. Shortly after passing through that lock, it was apparent the boats were much different. So was the vegetation. Lots of things seemed different. And the landscape was actually pretty beautiful. But this place seems to be the large insects that are buzzing around. There must have been some sort of convention of go-fast boats that day. But a little bit further up the river, things seemed to calm down, especially after we got under this bascule bridge here. This was more my pace. Nice and easy. The dogs seem to like this pace also. They found it a wonderful time to lay down and take a nap. As the miles ticked by, Mike and I reminisced about some other times when him and I went through this place. It's a swing bridge, I think. I think we're going to fit under this one. I remember you and I coming back and we made a turn and there was a heavy wind in our face and it was like late in the day and the sun was hot. I'll leave a link in the description below to that adventure I had with Mike on his boat, Good Times. Meantime, we had to navigate through this bridge. Port Denal, Swing Bridge, Channel 9. This is Port Denal, Swing Bridge, Cap. Yes, sir, what's your opening schedule? Upon request, Cap. Copy that, I'll make that request. 10-4, stand by. As I waited for the swing bridge to open, I expected to pull in right behind Mike, as we had done many times before. What I noticed though, at some point, Good Times just turned to the starboard, and as I passed him, he mentioned that one of his motors had shut off. Now we were about to, both of us, go past the swing bridge with one motor. Certainly was a lot going on in this particular time. Both of us having mechanical issues and lots of boat traffic. For a short while there, Mike was having steering issues too. Things were looking pretty bleak there for a second.
vessels, big and small, were racing around this area. Had I not turned it to that guy's wake, I probably would have lost some stuff downstairs. That I'm gonna have to get things a little, a little tidier downstairs, so I don't have to worry so much about that. I hope he gets a canker sore of that captain. <laughs> These two vessels, which had plenty of size, were going at a decent speed and did not make much of a wake. These three amigos weren't making much of a wake either. None of the speedboats actually posed any kind of problems. The big boys were the ones to watch out for. I am glad though that I was behind the wheel of Kantiki and not paddling a kayak. This 31-foot Chris Craft takes those wakes a little bit better. But it didn't matter because our motoring for the day was about to end. We were approaching the city dock at La Belle, where we planned to spend the night. And we were about to enter a slow speed minimum wake zone. Let it take you in now. Mike grabbed that pylon and helped turn Contiki into the slip. I gave him a little assist with the motor every once in a while. And we got some help from these people on the boat next to me. That boat's name is Not Quitters. And the captain and his wife turned out to be really nice folks. They turned out to be not the only two people that we met at this place that were actually very nice. This city dock wound up being a real haven for Mike and I. And although the bridge and the road were close, it didn't make a difference. I slept like a baby that night. Hats off to LaBelle for taking care of boaters as they come through. Well, this is the city dock or wharf at LaBelle, and all the uh, boats are supposed to go uh, slow, so it makes for a nice anchorage. What's also really, really nice is this is a free dock and you can plug your boat in, you can fill yourself up with water. There's some houses not too far away or businesses where you can go and get provisions. So that is really, really neat. But another neat thing that I've discovered about this little dock that if you're ever in the neighborhood, you should probably check out is the people that you meet when you're at a city dock. Anchoring up like you've seen me doing is pretty neat uh, as well and it has its perks but when you come to a place like this you meet some interesting people so let's uh, meet these interesting people right here what's up guys hey how's it going good uh, tell me your names so I'm Evan uh, Ariana yeah we're siblings uh, traveling in uh, Grand Bank story uh, named cod we have a tent up here for sleeping uh, powered by a 10 horsepower outboard in a motor well that's a that's a pretty neat boat. Uh, I saw these guys come in. As you can see, it's just it, that's a wood boat, is it not? Yeah, yeah. I, I love the wood design. It's uh, it's kind of like a homage to when man's inventions brought him closer to nature. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah. I like that. And how long is this boat? Uh, 23 feet. 23 feet. Well, I mean, it's a perfect size for getting under bridges. You don't. Have oh to, yeah, yeah. You never know? had a problem with bridges. Right. I bet. <laughs> I bet it doesn't draft too much either. No, no. It's uh probably only about a foot. One foot, and then the and then we have the, the motor that swings under. Maybe that's another couple, okay, five inches, six inches. Well, it is a cool boat, but one of the things that thought was really neat is where you guys came from. 
So I bought it up in New Hampshire, but we're from New Jersey. And we started the trip in like November, so it was already pretty cold. So I kind of cheated a little bit and I trucked the boat down to North Carolina where we have some family friends. So right. they helped us get set up. Uh, that was in Bath, North Carolina. So that's about a thousand miles by the Intracoastal Waterway from here. A thousand miles you guys have gone so far? Yeah, we left on December 2nd. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, what day is this? It's almost February now. I think so, yeah. We, we were so, in uh, New Smyrna Beach for like two weeks, just kind of hanging out once we got to the warm weather. Oh my like, gosh. Yeah. I, I wonder how many of you guys could do that on a 23-foot boat with a 10-horse motor, go a thousand miles. Uh, where are you guys going? Uh, we're going to stop in Naples because we have some family there, and then I guess Key West after <laughs> that. Uh, I guess I'll have to figure out a way to get the boat back up to North Carolina where I'll probably store it for a little bit until the next adventure. I think that's great, man. You see, a, you see a lot of mega yachts out here, people who spend a lot of money. They throw money at their adventures, and it kind of takes a little bit of the zest out of it. But you guys are about as zesty as you get. Very man. zesty, yeah. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> that's awesome, man. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to meet you guys, man. Yeah, likewise. Evan? Ariana? Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure. You never know who you're going to meet out on the water.